Hi, I'm Bob Osterhout. I want to talk to you about raising healthy children. Uh, one of the first things that's helpful to keep in mind in raising healthy children is the outcome. And, and it, it's helpful to have a real long-term view here, okay? And I like to ask the question, what would you like your children to be like when they're 25 and 30? Uh, get a sense of, of the type of person you would like them to be and figure out how what you do now may help lead them in that direction. So everything you do as a parent or a caregiver for a child is taking you in the direction of helping them to become a responsible, uh, fulfilled, satisfied adult. Okay? Uh, so think about each situation, how you deal with it, and what they can learn from that. Okay? And it's very helpful to keep in mind how children learn. The uh, uh, video on emotion talks about e children being pretty well emotionally intact at a very young age, whereas the developmental uh, part of their cognitive part of their brain is much longer, and that's not fully done until age 25 to 30. So uh, a younger child is going to be primarily emotional, and if we're talking to them logically, they're going to miss it. We need to understand where they are emotionally and help them to move forward as a, in a learning process. Uh, so the, the ABCs of stress management are, are uh, discussed in detail in your text with a number of examples in parenting situations. Uh, so I won't go into detail on, on that, uh, but refer you there. Uh, balance essentially is where you start. Uh, get tension out of the situation. Uh, that may uh, involve doing some diaphragmatic breathing and grounding, which are explained in other videos. Uh, so that you can see clearly and keep in mind that this is a learning process, not trying to get them in the car as fast as you can. Now, you may need to also get them in the car as fast as you can, but quite frankly, uh, if you do that as a learning process, it's more effective anyway and you'll save time. Uh, I can tell you a story about that from personal experience. Uh, we were running late once and my son was, uh, was three years old and my, my wife was pretty frustrated. Um, and, and she just said, you get him in the car because he was, he was into this book and, and not wanting to, read the, to go to the car. He wasn't ready to go. Uh, so I went into his room and sat next to him and said, uh, what you doing? He said, I'm looking at this book. And, and so, wow, that's pretty interesting. And we got into the book and, and spent, you know, 15, 20 seconds talking about the book. And I said, hey, how about if we continue reading this in the car? And he walked right to the car and there was no problem. So the first step is to connect with them emotionally, to see things from their perspective. So if the child is here and you want them to go here, you can't just tell them to go there. Okay, the key is to start with them and then walk along with them. And the way you start to go with them is perceptually. You see things how they see things. My son was totally focused on that book and going to the car wasn't part of his frame of reference at that time. So you need to get into his frame of reference and then expand it to include getting into the car. And that principle applies throughout many different ages. Uh, in dealing with older children, uh, actually, uh, let me give one more comment on younger children before I move on to that. Uh, the other uh, key is consistency. Uh, I recommend 100% consistency. Uh, anytime you are inconsistent, you're telling a child, teaching a child, that what you just said doesn't matter. So if I say no twice before I act, the child will learn that the first two don't matter and he'll just keep on doing. So why bother saying the first two? Okay. Uh, so part of that includes being very careful when you say no uh, because that means you have to follow through. If you don't follow through, you're sending the wrong message and, and, and uh, you're setting up a pattern for, for destructive behavior. Uh, one of the most common things I see with parents uh, with problem children is that inconsistency uh, and also a tendency to lecture and uh, the children don't hear the lecture and they're operating on an emotional basis and, and actually lectures don't work at any age, even teenagers. Uh, they just simply tune it out and it doesn't work. So the key is to, to find out how they're seeing things and try to help them see the larger picture more clearly. And in order to do that, you need to be in balance, you need to accept where they are, and then we're talking about the process of clarifying and using those three principles, the ABCs of stress management. Uh, I want to leave you with one formula that I found to be very helpful in dealing with a wide range of problem situations with, with uh, uh, children basically, uh, it could be as young as four, but most likely it would be six and up, okay? And it's very simple, it's respect, 
plus responsibility equals privileges. And it's simple mathematics. One plus one equals two. Okay, two plus two equals four. If you have two plus one, you only have three. Uh, and you simply explain that to the child. Um, I, I noticed that there was some disrespect here, so the privilege, this privilege is going to disappear until I see the respect come back up. So rather than punishment, which tends to build up resentment, and, and is a, especially when it's in a time frame, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with what you're trying to teach them uh, necessarily directly. Uh, when you show an appropriate amount of respect, then the privilege comes back. When you show the right amount of responsibility, then the privilege come back. And the privileges go up as the respect and responsibilities go up. Okay, So uh, that simple formula, respect plus responsibility equals privileges, is a very simple way uh, to deal with a wide range of problems. And ultimately, it leads the child in the direction of what works in life. Because successful adults are those who are respectful and responsible, for the most part. Um, so it helps them to understand that process and to make corrective action. And it's, it's, a, it's a fluid, adaptive process. So if they immediately show responsibility and respect and it, and it counters uh, the lack of respect or responsibility there was for it, the privileges come right back. If it takes a long time, it takes a long time. It's a learning process for them and they move forward and things get easier with time. So good luck with that.